was born in Woodstock, raised in my early childhood years in Athlone, um, Silvertown. Um, eventually at the age of seven I moved to retreat to live with my mom. Um, I remember growing up in front of her, she was a born again Christian and she always invited the homeless people into her home and uh, served them before she would serve us our meals that lived in the house as cousins and children. So it was a bit challenging because I would never understood what she was actually doing. Having had my different experiences in life, I got to understand more about what she actually was doing and that, that actually um, brought an interest in my life uh, as to seeking this what she was actually doing here. Yeah. Never seen my mother and my father actually together ever. And my father explained to me one day while he was drunk that it was, I was just one one night stand. So yes, it was a big discouragement for me because um, I thought like, oh, all hope is gone now. After meeting him at the age of 10, and he just drifted away, he never saw him for a long time. So I was living with my grandmother in Eastfield. So yeah, that, that was a big discouragement. I always had this um, childhood dream of becoming a manager. I just don't know why a manager. Maybe I needed management in my life, but um, I think eventually I did actually become a manager um, working for Cash One Virtus. But that dream also f fell apart eventually when I got back into drugs, when I lost my job. And so things really spiraled out of control and um, I really lost all hope in terms of what I wanted to do or what I wanted to become, you know. I mean, that was one of my childhood dreams. But having lost the hope of not actually fulfilling that and, and building on that, that really gave me a sense of um, hopelessness, you know. Getting involved in the nightclub industry, DJing and that, um, I, I had always a passion for, for music and, 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 and aspire taking it to the next level. Playing a lot of gigs, I was very busy and I couldn't keep up anymore with the, with the demands of the, of the job. So eventually what happened is a friend introduced me to Crystal Meth and he said, try this thing, this thing will keep you going for, for, the, for the night, you know, able to play all your gigs. Eventually I tried it out and guess what? I'm sure I had my friend told me that same day that you take this thing, two years down the line, this is the outcome of your life. This is what will happen to you. I, I don't think I would ever have done something so stupid. But right now, I think that was one of the main um, um, challenges that I faced was I lost even hope where the music was concerned because the drugs, I became so dependent on the, on the substance. Yeah. I've been homeless for two years. Yeah. I think it was fear, number one. Fear of the unknown, not knowing, um, uh, just the fact of not knowing that there's anybody out there for you, that you can't turn to anybody because of the choices that you've made, you know, the fact that I've chosen the, the, to go the drug route, also not knowing the outcome. Um, it was a very dark space and a very empty space, you know, I felt alone, rejected. Um, there was a bit of trauma, you know, and there was also a lot of challenges living on the street because um, on the street it's all about territory and uh, the numbers gang and I wasn't affiliated to any, so it was a big challenge for me. I think it made a massive negative impact in my life. I just really didn't care about myself anymore, you know. I even came to the point where I attempted to commit suicide. So it, it really took its toll on my, on my mental aspect and also my physical and also emotional. So there was a lot of trauma involved also because I lost my relationship with my wife that time. So ended up divorced. Just having to lose all of those things that I built so, you know, it's it really took its toll on me and also losing my job. So yeah, it takes a massive toll on your life, yeah. One day I was on the street and then this homeless couple, I'll never forget, I was sleeping with them at, in Deep River. And then they gave me a U-turn voucher. And they told me, Clint, you don't belong on the street. Man. It, just, it just doesn't suit you. Don't you rather just wanna go for help? And then I said, well, I'll try it out. I mean, I, I remember taking that voucher and just putting it in my pocket and I said, yeah, I don't have time for this now. Man. But eventually, the, uh, not even two days down the line, and I, and, and I felt this thing come out of my pocket and it was still this voucher, and I thought, okay, let me just go and try it, because all I hope was lost and everything. So I went to U-turn Powerhouse in Claremont. I walked, I remember walking till there from Deep River, and then I think when I made contact with them, my first experience like was doubt, was like, oh, not the same old Christian, Christian. 
passion stuff again. But I, I think the more I went back, the more I seen, I felt I felt at home and I felt at peace there. I felt like I could actually be myself, man. and that is actually what I needed. Being part of those ignite sessions that really helped me a lot. Joining the program was was a big step for me. Um, I think the first day that I joined the ignite session, that I already felt something, man. There was a something, and I felt that sense of longing was was being ignited in terms of my my connection of, of what I was longing for, man. Sense of community, sense of family, and just a share a place where you can share and you can you can just talk, you can be free to talk and nobody will judge you. Man. So I felt like that was a real true place of refuge for me. If there is one thing that I will take from the program is that I've I've decided to use the the program as the foundation of my life now going forward because I never had a foundation you know coming from a broken home I never had any guidance or mentorship so I think um, the the time that I've spent on the program from P1 to P3 I've, I've I even at my ripe age at 46 I've decided to use that as my foundation as my tool so whenever I'm faced with challenges out there I will just go back to my tools which is the foundation of what I've learned there.